In the distance, it seems like a mirage. Up close, it's a pretty solid little town, anchored firmly to the rocks of Bonavista Bay. This is Newtown, not far from Cape Friels, a cluster of gleaming white homes and stately churches, of well-kept stages and stores, red ochred against the salt spray. Don't be fooled by the name. People have lived here in Newtown for a long time. Newtown's population increased dramatically, though, about 25 years ago, when many families moved in from Pinchard's Island. They all live here together now, and they all make their living from the sea, just as they've always done. Well, there have been changes. The Labrador fishery has faded, and with it the schooners. The seal fishery isn't what it was. But the cod is still king. It's caught on the inshore grounds, and is practically all salted. Newtown is a proud place. It has its traditions, it has its memories. Remarkable old characters lived in this town, men who could sail and fish with the best of them, men who could cut their own timber and build their own homes and churches here on the bleakest and rockiest of shores. Some are mansions, living museums of the days when such places thrived on the salt fish trade. Yes, Newtown was quite a place in its day, and for that matter, it still is. For people still live here, and people still fish here. The sea still provides a good livelihood. In the spring, the fishermen of Newtown fish for lobsters, and a few for lumpfish. But when summer comes, it's codfish they're after. The grounds are near, the boats are small. There are some traps, there are some trawls. But mostly, the fishermen of Newtown depend on gill nets. In most places this year, the inshore fishery was a failure. The fish simply didn't come in close to shore. Here on the Newtown grounds, it was an exception. One of the few places where there was a spot of fish. And the spot of fish that stayed around, too. It stayed long enough to attract other fishermen, including longliners, who'd been getting low prices for the turbot they'd been catching offshore. They came in to join the small boats on the inshore grounds. And so the grounds off Newtown this year were crowded, more crowded than ever before. And many fishermen were angry about the influx of men and boats. But despite it all, they managed to have a good year. Somehow, they always seem to, here in Newtown. Clarence, you've fished now all your life, 40 years, you've 40 you say. years, sir. Have you ever regretted? I, got ter I, I fished 38 years, to be quick about it. I was two years on the land. And the two particular years that I was working on the land, I made a jink. For instance, I was working nine months for $925. <laughs> Gee, boy. That was some bad, wasn't it? So the fishery was never as bad as that to you? No. And that particular, there was two summers, the fish was thousands. <laughs> I know I could <laughs> beat that with, with, with almost two fingers. But anyway. That taught you a lesson. So much for that. I, 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 I've I stuck with the fishery, sir, ever since. Never regretted it? No. I, I, I've had some hard times, you know, because it's a hard course to fish on. We got so much shallow water. But thank God that the, I've never made a failure. But uh, if a fellow had to, had to depend on just the fish alone, sir, it'd have been a pure disaster. What do you mean? What else? I mean, he, 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 if, he couldn't, if he couldn't catch other species of fish, like, for instance, lobster would be the main one, of course. Well, then, if he had to trust just a bit of cod alone, and it would have had to feed the family, sir, to be poor job done. But now most, a lot of fishermen don't have uh, lobster licenses or lump licenses or they can't fish for everything, can they? No, not the, there's a lot, but in the meantime, most of Newtown is uh, very well off in that respect. 
So that's how Newtown survives, by everybody going after oh, everything. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Now, there's a few fellows, you know, there's, there's a few fellows that haven't got, haven't got a, a lapse of license, but uh, if a fellow, for instance, in my case, the fellow what I have with me, he hasn't got a license, but I take him. So but maybe when the licenses are spread over Newtown, you take a partner with them, and it takes care of have a, have a X number of men, see, but uh, wouldn't be at lapses normally. So you've stuck with the fishery here in Newtown over the years. Everybody has pretty well, have they? Well, yes. Uh, everybody. Uh, not, not, I wouldn't say everybody, no, sir. To tell you the truth, uh, uh, the, the, real, the real blood and barn fishermen stuck with the good and the bad, the thick and the thin. But uh, there's a lot of fellows, of course, I suppose, they probably couldn't, couldn't survive on, 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 the, on the cod, so they just went away. But now the last two or three years have brightened up again, maybe four or five and they started to fish again. But unfortunately, uh, this period, when they, when they lift off, they lost a, a, a lobster license, they summoned them. So now, like I was saying, without the lobster license, it's almost impossible to survive off cod alone. It's a dilemma faced by many fishermen, not only here, but all over. Men who, for one reason or another, drifted away from the fishery, found that they couldn't come back when they wanted to. A licensing system had been put in place, making it virtually impossible to get back your salmon or lobster license. If you wanted to re-enter the fishery, you could catch only ground fish. And for the men in the small boats, this meant codfish and only codfish. Some say it's necessary that the fishery can no longer support anyone who wants to jump in a boat. Take Max Perry, for instance. This summer, he was a fisherman. Right now, he's working with a team of men dredging out the channel at Newtown. He says it's to get his lobster money. I've been fishing 35 years, but I split up on the last 10 or 12 years, I went away. And I only got a part-time fisherman license. And I got no uh, lobster license. But what I got lobster license there and, and codfish, I mean, they're, they're making good money, but I only can trust to the codfish. And I, I got to go to work in the fall to get me lobster money. That's what I got to do. You mean you got you to gotta leave Newtown or you got to work outside? Oh, I got to uh, want eat this job and come here. That's on dredging the harbor. Yeah, right? I had to go away and, I mean, make up. I, well, I, I could live, I suppose, but you want to make so much money as that if I don't end it to it. So I don't want to wait somewhere and work for the fall. Got, got me lobster money back. Well, how do you feel about that? Now, would uh, do you feel bad about not having a lobster license? Yes, I mean I may out of spring. I was there to spring. Well, same thing. I may have sat down a rock and fellers coming in. Once well, a nanny from make a thousand dollars a week. I say that was I mean, small money. Then I say if I say a thousand, they was all making thousand dollars a week. And I just simply had to stay there until the twentieth of June and wait for the card come. What's it like out there now? What kind of grounds do you have? Well, the ground is not all, the spots of ground is not all that big what's out there. Two, that's why we're talking about two nits. Two nits goes over them. That's why they boil it down there with two nits. That's the two nits covers the ground, we'll say. There's only small spots of ground, but they're not very far apart. The furnace and one's wig fishes on is a how and half for that boat. How and half steam for that boat, and from that thing. We start here just off this island, Pinch's Island, in the spring with five minutes steam, that's why you mean it's too first. And then you work out kind of the fish fall back, you fall back. So you say most most uh, fishermen now have short, uh, have only two or three nets in the fleet? Yeah, most of we fellas. I don't think uh, what well, could be, say, if I had, uh, I got 48 nets and I had 49, well, I put three on one string, I mean, I couldn't put one out. Every man there, that's what, they, that's what we call the fleet, two. Two nits, two, two nits together, and just drops in and goes on. And uh, we had a bit of trouble with fellers there, new fellers coming. We always put two boys on our southern end. Well, you know, when the other feller comes, well, there's a southern end there, I can drop there and go on, because that fellow down there. Right. But they, 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 after time, they. You got the two boys the same as we, we had no trouble with that. But there's a fine run of fish out here too, isn't it? 
in the gill nets? Good, good fish, good fish. Uh, if you, uh, if we, uh, well, we use a size net, I think a lot of them. But I say you have 16th meat net, all 16th meat nets, you have better fish, but I don't, don't think you get so much on it. My fish, our fish average $101 a draft. Uh, yeah, that's $101 a draft, that's two pounds. Crews in Newtown made out fairly well this year. The top boats caught 300 drafts of fish. That's not bad for a short season in a small boat. But according to some fishermen, it was not simply a matter of setting a net and hauling the fish aboard last year. Some say the grounds were too crowded. There were too many boats, too many nets and especially too many longliners converging on the Newtown grounds. Our prime ground, what do you call it, Charles Rock? The rock off about four miles off the land here, of the uh, 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 rock called Charles Rock. But that's, that's where all, most of the Newtown boats always fish. And the longliners came in the air and just put them right down on top of the whole works and there's already a way for any of the small boats to, to to get in on at all, you see. And this, this is where the, 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 the body of fish lodged to, and a few kids was there. So they put down about maybe 200 nits in this small area. Now the fellow what was always depending on it, she boy, he had to be, well, he, he, he couldn't get his gear up if they, if they sit across him, you see. So th this is what I was saying, but he, if those nits weren't there, then of course it would be a different scene, because we were at a, a, a much, much easier time fishing. But now when those fellows came in on the smaller boat, and with all these nits, 200 nits there, it caught a lot of fish. There. We're right on the prime ground where the Newtown people always fish. So, so what did you have to do then? Did you, well, were there you other had, grounds? You, you, just had to, you just had to get what you could. You know, you, you're getting close by them. Sometimes the, the, I dare say this particular year passed now, there was more fellows cross, what they cross, cross money. You know, you shoot here and a fellow this way. And, and, and then you, you probably pull the knit up and you just draw the knife across, cut it, you know. No, one, no, no, no other way out. The smaller fellow, especially. So, boy, just, just, just beyond imagination, sir, to tell you the truth. There's a heap of point, you know, I'm going to tell you the God's truth. And I've been fishing now for, for well, for close to 40 years. And the past two summers, sir, it's how much make you sick to get out of bed. Because y you have to increase the amount of gear to catch the same fish you caught 15 years ago with, say, 15 nits, you want 40, 40 at least to catch the same amount. So with all the, 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 the everyone increasing gear, plus the long liners, gee, and in, 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 a, in a very small, about four mile area, I, I, I would say, sir, there's about 300 men. The pure army, the army Gideon, and that is a crowd when they, when they cross the Red Sea. So, brother, I'm telling you that if, 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 it's, if it stays that way, if there's not some kind of a zone for the inshore boat and the line miners increase, if air fish do come anymore, it would be a done job, sir. See, what happened was, when those line miners were, were, were come out first, they go into the government, no strings attached, no questions asked and no nothing. If you want a $200,000 boat, 300,000, now it's got up to 700,000. No, nothing at all. Come on, whosoever will. And, and, and this is what put all those boats on the coast. I don't know the blame for that. I suppose it's our own provincial government, the, 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 the loan board. At that particular time, they, all they were concerned about, just a few years ago, you know, was, get, was getting, men, getting men in the fishing boat. Now, were they catching enough fish to keep a cat or something else? They couldn't care less. They were almost put, ramming it down your throat. So, sir, now then, he, gets, he finds himself right now in, in a spot that there's, there's too many. There's too few fish for too, too many men. Some people say there's too many boats out there that the longliner shouldn't fish in close like that. Well, how do you feel about it? Well, I fished with Father and Uncle Lee for 15 years, and they always said 
If you can't help, don't hurt. Well, that's the way fishing is. What, what, what can he do? He's a long, long and out there. This is ground. There's harder fish there before him, I suppose. And so just a while, they got just as so much of the right to the ground as all oh, your other fathers. But I never had no trouble. Well, I never had no more trouble with the... Never had so much trouble as the I did with our own crowds. I mean, what you call our shoremen. The little bit I did have cross. But, but the only thing... Uh, about the long line is that they, they sit with us. Two nits in a fleet. They have four or five nits in a fleet. And they can't judge the ground coming up over. And they sit across others. But... That's the only thing, and I think they would do that if you talked to them. So you think if they had shorter fleets than nets, uh, you'd be okay? Yeah, if they used the nets like we, I, I, I say it's a ground enough out there for the boats we had out there last year. I couldn't see. If they never got that fish, I wouldn't got it. So not much you can do with that. So it's only our own crowd. You take from Bedges Key, that's what I call it, our own crowd. From Bedges Key to Musgrave Harbor, I wouldn't. Perhaps we'll have to go in there next year. And perhaps we'll have to go up that way. So, I mean, there's not much you can do about it. What's the answer? Well, what, what's got to be done to control it? Well, the, the answer, sir, is some kind of a buffer zone for the inshore, for the boat, for Hunter at least, I would say, 35 feet, 35 feet down. Over 30 feet to over 35 feet, she should stay off at least seven or eight miles. But is there any fish further offshore? Well, now that's something else. This, this water cod, this particular water cod the last couple of three years have, have come almost in the same area, you see. But now there is Lake Turbot in Flounder, which the price was down here, a uh, little further afield. But see, the idea of it is that uh, this, the cod is a better price. And if you can catch, you know, you don't need as much cod to, to fetch as much money, uh, you know. So this is why, I suppose. And, and, and the bit of cod what was going at, at being this, this small area, so this is why they were here, I, I suppose. Clarence, can that be solved now by you fishermen talking it over among yourselves? These are some of your own people you're talking about. Oh, yeah, they? yeah. Or, or does it have to be done by government? Order? Well, sir, it's got to be done by government. We're, we're, we're working on it now. I mean, the idea of it is government has to do it. Because, as I can say to the fellow skipper on the line liner, but I look here, there's nuts for you in here. Gee, man, it looks crazy to see you here in a big 65, say, $200,000 boat or half a million dollar boat. So, yes, say, boy, we're in a free world. Sure, I get to admit to that. But on the other hand, I, 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 I mean, they were not built for that. They were not given to anyone for, to, to fish it where 18 foot boat fe fishes, as far as I'm concerned. But see, you'll have this point, and I'll have mine. There's no cooperation there with Todd whatsoever. But it has to be cited, it has to be decided by somebody, for instance, like the government. Somebody independent and say, now, here's what got to be done. You've got to stay off 8 or 10 or 12 miles, whatever the case, whatever, however far you put on it, and respect the other fellow. Other than that, I don't know. Like I said, a done job, sir. In, in the very near future. I can't see it to tell the truth about it. Surviving another two or three years. And so the fishermen of Newtown talk and argue among themselves about the future course of their fishery. Is it a matter of establishing zones for small inshore boats? Or does a longliner have a right to go wherever the fish are? Can the problems be solved by the fishermen simply talking the matter through among themselves? Or will it require tough government controls? Hopefully it will somehow be resolved this winter. It's ironic though, after years of talking about driving away the foreign fishermen, we end up squabbling among ourselves over the few fish that do make it close to land. There's something wrong, there has to be. Are our longliners really capable of venturing offshore? Why haven't we developed a fleet of midwater vessels like the Norwegians and Faroese have? Where is the master plan, the strategy for developing our fishery? Why must so many depend on these few inshore fish? Of course, if the inshore fishery in other areas improves next year and the turbot markets pick up, the problem here in Newtown will no longer exist. Other boats can then use their own grounds, and longliners will likely move offshore. But there's no guarantee, and while there's no guarantee, many of the Newtown fishermen will be concerned. You can hardly blame them. They have a resource on their doorstep, which they must depend on. 
They've stuck with the fishery down through the years. They've done well by it, and they want to continue to do so. You're an eager bunch of fishermen here in Newtown, though. Oh, yes, sir. I must say that. that you're amongst the, the, the eager bunch of men that you can get on this coast. It's here in Newtown. This is a rough ground, like you say. It's a pretty rough ground. It's shallow water, see? And with the wind on, with the wind east and on, on land, my dear man, and black fog and sea, by golly, she wants a nerve. And they have that, they're determined to, 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 to survive on their own and to stay independent, which, which most people in Newton, believe me, takes great pride in, is being independent. Because this is one of the spots, to my knowledge, I've been here now 30 years, 31 years to be correct, and I don't think there have been two families on relief over that period of time. So there are eager bunch of men here, very eager bunch of men. Yes, they're an eager bunch in Newtown. You can tell by the way everyone pitches in at the fishery. When the boats come in, you'll find men, women, and children down at the wharf, serving tables, cutting throats, gutting, splitting. It was a rare sight this summer. Not many places did as well at the fishery. They dragged out the fishery here as long as they could till the fish began to get scarce and the weather bad. Practically all the fish were shipped salt bulk, a good price, a good fishery for the people of Newtown. We went back to Newtown last week. The boats were up on the slipway. Someone had a fine pile of birch junks ready for the winter. Every garden had some light salted fish, catching the last warmth of the late October sun. The fishery was over, everything stored away. Youngsters back at school now, getting ready for Halloween. But the ladies of Newtown had their harvest festival in mind. This is a special service the churches have here each fall. A time to give thanks for the fruits of the land and the sea. And here in Newtown, that means carrots and salt fish and cakes and flowers and homemade bread and partridges and rabbits. The ladies of Newtown invited us. They thought it might be a good way to end our show about Newtown. And so did we.
this time of harvest, we give you thanks for all the wonders of the universe which you have created and for all things 